Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about you, actually, because I put a poll out the other day with a pretty simple question, what is your favorite type of silver bullion to stack, and you, my subscribers, responded. So today we'll be talking about what all of you smart silver stackers out there love to stack, what your favorite types of silver bullion are, and then I'll be sharing with you sort of what my favorite types of silver bullion are as well, and we'll see how my audience stacks up against my preferences, because this won't necessarily be based on the best silver as an investment or the best value or anything like that. I'm just going to share with you what my personal favorite types of silver bullion are based on a number of factors. So it's going to be kind of a fun video. So let's get to it. So starting off the list with the least popular form of silver bullion for all of you stackers out there, and that category was just listed as other. And in parentheses, I had flatware, uh, jewelry, silver shot, etc. So I don't really have any silver shot or silver jewelry to show you at the moment, but I do have some pieces of flatware. And as far as flatware goes, I think I'm right on par with my audience. If you've seen my previous videos, you know that this is, in my opinion, one of the worst forms of silver to stack. Now, if you can get it real cheap, you can see this piece even still has the price tag from, I don't know, an estate sale probably, or a yard sale, wherever I picked this up. Uh, and I paid 10 cents for this little sterling cup. So I would go ahead and say that if you can get silver way, way below spot like that, uh, it's probably worth grabbing. But this stuff takes up a lot of space. It's not pure silver. It's typically 0.925 or lower purity. So if you try to go to sell this, you're probably going to get less than the spot value of the metal. I don't know. I've picked some up below spot. I really can't turn silver down when I can get it below spot price. But other than that, this is really not the best form of silver for investing or stacking or anything like that. And it seems like most of you out there agree. Now, if you're the person who voted for this as your favorite form of silver bullion to be stacking, please let me know in the comments below why exactly that is. Because, you know, I'm sure an argument can be made for it, but I can't think of any. So I would love to hear your rationale for this being your absolute favorite type of silver. And next up, we have the fourth most popular type of silver bullion, generic silver rounds coming in with 14% of the vote. And again, I want to say a big thank you to all of my subscribers, especially those of you who answered this poll. And if you'd like to see the polls that I'll be putting out in the future and participate in those, go ahead and click the subscribe button so you can see those in your YouTube feed. So silver rounds, uh, these are a great way to invest in silver, a great way to get silver bullion, and it looks like some of you out there agree. Although there were some types of silver bullion that beat this stuff out, and I'm going to have to go ahead and say that I sort of agree. These are not my absolute favorite type of silver, but one of the cool things about generic silver rounds is just how many patterns there are. I really do like that about the silver rounds because there's tons of private mints that put these out. Some of these have a really cool history. Uh, this one from Panama City in Florida, and you can tell that this is old because it's got the uh, three letter postal abbreviation. You know, we don't use those anymore. So kind of an interesting little historic round. But I really like this one because I just love how bold the font is on the back. It really makes no question about what this uh, is that you're holding in your hand. 999 fine silver in a great big font. So I really like these. And silver rounds can be a lot of fun, especially if you are at your local coin shop and they have a decent selection of secondary market products that you can kind of look through. You do have to be wary of counterfeits. There are some counterfeit generic rounds out there, but you know, hopefully if you're shopping at a local coin shop, they have enough skill to spot those before they put them out for sale. And like I said, these are not my absolute favorite type of silver to stack, but I definitely have a few generic rounds. You can usually get these for a pretty low premium. There's lots of cool patterns, so you might just see some patterns that you really like, and they're definitely worth taking a look at. And next up, we have coming in in the number three position with 19% of the vote, 90% junk silver. Now, it was a little bit of a surprise to me that junk silver didn't rank a little bit higher on the poll. And I suppose that while it may not be everybody's favorite type of silver, it's probably a close second for a lot of people. 
because I think a lot of stackers, you know, they might get started with this. I think some of the first silver coins I ever bought at a coin shop were 90% silver, and they're very recognizable. You know, they have a lot going for them. They're interesting pieces of history. Uh, this is a walking Liberty half dollar minted in 1941. And it's kind of interesting when you hold this coin to think that this coin probably was circulating during World War II, you know, during a very tumultuous time in our country's history. And these coins are just sort of a touchstone to a time when we had sound money in this country. They were the circulating currency and they are composed of 90% silver. So I think that's pretty neat. It's probably the best form of fractional silver coinage you can get because the premium on this stuff is really low and, you know, it takes about 14 of these silver dimes to equal one troy ounce of silver. So it is very fractional and it's suited for day-to-day -day transactions. You can see why this was circulating currency in our country for as long as it was. One reason you might want to stock up on some junk silver is if you're concerned about being able to trade or barter after some kind of SHTF scenario, you know, if the dollar collapses or it's some kind of Mad Max future, this may revert to being our currency. Who knows? It's circulated for a long time. Silver coins like this were the money, the primary money for the common person in the United States for over a century. And I don't think it's crazy to think that these might go back to being circulating coinage one day or something like them, who knows. Although this isn't my absolute favorite type of silver, I think that junk silver has a special place in the heart for all stackers out there, myself included, and they're just awesome coins. So if you're one of my subscribers who ranked this as your absolute favorite silver. Let me know in the comments below what your rationale for that is, and let me know what your favorite type of junk silver is. Do you like uh, mercury dimes? Do you like Washington quarters? Or are you more a fan of the slightly heftier half dollars? I would love to know what you think about that. So let me know, and who knows, maybe that'll be a future poll. And coming in with 27% of the vote, your second favorite type of silver bullion to stack generic silver bars. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, it probably comes as no surprise to you to hear that silver bars are actually my favorite way of stacking silver bullion. I'm not saying that I think they're the best value necessarily or the best silver investment, although if you just want to get the absolute most ounces of silver for your money, silver bars may actually be the best way to go because especially uh, large bars like this, you can usually find those with a pretty low premium when you're comparing them to other physical bullion products. Now, these come in lots of shapes and sizes. There's generic one ounce bars, five ounce bars, 10 ounce bars. You get 20 ounce poured bars like this. If you want to go metric, you can get a kilo bar or a hundred ounce bar. Now, there are bigger bars at 400 ounces or 1,000 troy ounces. Those are really just for industrial purposes, I think. I wouldn't recommend getting those. I mean, moving those around would be a challenge. Even these, I mean, obviously a 100 ounce bar you can pick up, but, you know, I would recommend wearing closed toed shoes when you do it, because if you drop this thing on your foot, you're probably going to regret that. Now, if you're somebody who voted for silver bars as your favorite type of silver bullion to stack, I would love for you to let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite type of silver bar? Do you like 10 ounce bars, generic one ounce bars? Are you going for the 20 ounce poured bars? Are you going for something a little bit bigger with a kilo or a hundred ounce? I would love to know. And let me know what your rationale for that is. And one other thing I do really like about silver bars is that you know, you can handle these things. If they get dinged up or scuffed up or they get some milk spots on them, it really doesn't matter because these are just a bullion investment. And as long as the weight of the metal doesn't get reduced, then you're not really losing any value if they get a little bit scuffed up. I mean, you can see most of these bars here I'm showing you have been uh, well handled and I'm not really worried about that. Now, some bars do have kind of a collectible value. If you've got some kind of a vintage bar or a highly polished bar, you know, something special with some kind of a premium attached to it, that rule might not go. But for the vast majority of silver bars, it's just a bullion value. So you're just going based on the weight, not necessarily the appearance or uh, any kind of grading or anything like that. And finally, 
your favorite type of silver bullion to stack coming in with 40% of the vote, government mint one ounce silver coins. Now, there is a lot to be said for silver coins like this American Silver Eagle, especially the Eagle. I mean, they are probably the absolute most recognizable silver bullion coin in the world. And I don't really feel uncomfortable saying that. If anybody disagrees and thinks that there's something more recognizable than an American Silver Eagle, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. But I think that these are the number one most recognizable bullion coin in the world. Now, one issue that I have with American Silver Eagles at the moment is the high premiums. Uh, these things, if you wanna buy new Eagles, you're gonna be paying a 20 to 30% premium over the spot price of the metal. And although Eagles are really cool and they are very recognizable and they are US legal tender, which has some advantages to it as well, I have to say that I would opt for something lower premium like a Canadian Maple Leaf. And one thing that the Maple Leaf has going for it is that it is four nines pure. I don't really know that uh, in the event that you go to sell these, that's gonna make much difference as compared to something like an Eagle, which only has a 0.999 fine silver. But Maple Leaves are also extremely recognizable and you can pick these up for a slightly lower premium than the Eagles and if you guys have watched some of my recent videos, you know that my actual number one pick for silver bullion as an investment for 2021 is this coin right here. It's the Australian Perth Mint one ounce kangaroo. This is also four nines fine, so a very fine silver coin. And one, okay, I like kangaroos a lot. I just think they're a cool animal. In my previous video, I mentioned Roger, the world's most jack kangaroo, and who doesn't like him? He just looks like an animal you wouldn't want to tangle with, so I think he's a cool animal to have on your money. Not a huge fan of the queen image on here, I guess, but, you know, I also don't want to pay a 20% premium for coins, and the premium on these Perth Mint coins is very reasonable, and they are legal tender. It is a one Australian dollar coin, so there are perhaps some benefits to that, although I'm not sure what benefit having an Australian legal tender coin would have for someone like myself who lives in the United States. But if there's anything you guys can think of, let me know. And one of the reasons that I really like these coins also is they just have a very good resale market, even though perhaps not as recognizable as something like an American Silver Eagle or a Canadian Maple Leaf. They do have a really good resale market and they even have a little bit of like a collectible premium to them. If you look at the eBay sales, uh, the finished sales, you can see that these routinely sell for a decent premium on there. So there is a secondary market where you can unload those if you needed to. And that's why they made my top pick for the number one coin. And I do really like these uh, Perth Mint coins. Every Perth Mint coin I've ever seen has had a really cool design and I think that they just make great coins. So if you're watching and you're one of the subscribers who voted for government coins as your number one type of bullion for stacking, let me know why in the comments below. I mean, I think that the reasons are pretty obvious and it's a pretty good case and you guys made a good decision having these be your number one type of bullion, but I would love to hear your specific rationale in the comments below, so please let me know. And if you guys liked this video, then smash that subscribe button, click that bell icon. And if you'd like to see more videos about silver and silver investing, there will be some popping up on your screen right now that you can click on. So check those out and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks again for watching. Keep stacking. Smart Silver Stacker out.